free. Mr. Bergeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. About a couple of different things. First off, we're going to talk about some general tips. Arthur has mentioned. Yes. I never told you Frank and Mary live in this funky old house. <laughs> 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 Not handicapped accessible. <laughs> <laughs> Is this not a? Hello. Oh, there you go. We got to. Get a little closer to. Now you're in the shop. Okay. Let's switch. I'll go here. You go. Okay. Some general tips. Um, as, as Arthur had mentioned, there's many things that you can do to your home. We won't go into all of them today, but we're going to just talk about some general things that even you can do to help make your house safer for somebody with dementia. When you think safety, what do you think? Prevention. And in the prevention, what are you going to do? Adapt your environment. And to adapt your environment, you might have to minimize the danger. And those are our goals when we talk about simplifying your home. So it's simplify, label, secure, and modify. Those are the four key words that we use when we go in to assess a home for somebody who may have dementia. Simplify. I bring this up in my daughter's bedroom years ago. Wait, was that, so does your daughter have dementia? <laughs> <laughs> no, because if she had dementia and she woke up in that, she'd, she'd be, be dead. very, very, <laughs> very, very un unhappy. Um, so yes, yeah, so clutter is one thing that somebody with dementia cannot apprehend and cannot deal with. So the best thing to start with is removing that clutter, simplifying that same room. Removing clutter is the number one thing. And furniture. Many people, I know I myself have a lot of little tchotchkes around the house that my toddler grandson now comes to visit and all that has been cleared. It's the same thing um, in dealing with somebody with dementia. You want to clear the pathway. You want to have a safe movement from point A to point B. And as we get older, we tend to lean on some of our furniture to go from point A to B, point B. And we want to make sure that the furniture that somebody may lean on isn't going to break underneath them because that will cause an, an injury. Somebody with dementia, when they look in a mirror, gets very frightened. They don't know who that person is looking back at them. They think that maybe somebody is in there with them and, they, and it scares them. So we recommend that you cover a mirror or remove it altogether from the room. Scatter rugs. Number one trippable surface in a home is a scatter rug, and I am guilty of them as well. And I keep saying, and I tripped on it the other day, and I said, all right, I got to listen to my own advice and remove my scatter rugs, because I have them in my kitchen, I have them in my front hall. We all have them, but they are trippable, and especially as the rubber backing starts to wear some, they become even more slippable, and they will cause an injury if you fall on them. Portable space heaters and fans. Somebody with dementia does not remember what a space heater was for, or what a fan. It's very cool, it's going around and around. But they may try to stick their fingers into it, they may try to do something to it. So we really recommend that you remove those from any of the environment that they're in. Poisonous plants. I know you're all looking at me like, really? Poisonous plants? But I give you an example. We had a client who was an avid gardener. Beautiful garden outside, all edible fruits and vegetables and whatever. In her home, she had some plants as well. Thinking she was in her garden, she went and took out a leaf, started to eat it, and it was poisonous. So we had to call poison control and have her taken care of. But again, she did not know that what she was doing was wrong. So if we remove, prevent, minimize the danger, out of sight, out of mind, Electrical cords. Oh, there's no none here. Uh oh. Usually, they bring a Usually there's a. Your cord. <laughs> and yes, he does that for me all the time. Electrical cords running around here and there. They're trippable. So we tell you either to tack them down with tape, or get a very short cord, or hang them up on the wall because people will trip over them. I have myself. Fish tanks, pet cages. Again, it's the same thing. It's something that somebody with dementia does not remember what that little thing swimming around in that water is. It looks kind of cool. I'm going to come in and I'm going to grab it. I may even try to eat it. So we tell you to remove things of that nature from the environment. Artificial fruit is another one, or fruit magnets on, on refrigerators, because they remember that it's a piece of fruit, but they're not going to necessarily remember that it's not a piece of fruit that's edible. 
labeling. This is a great example of how to label your bedroom dresser, where the shirts are, the socks, the shorts, the blankets, and what have you. Labeling is a wonderful way for memory recall. Somebody told me, by the way, they had their grandchildren do this. This was like a grandchildren project. So it was like cool. So Pepe went into the, they went into the bureau and it was like, oh, look, look at the pictures, right? And they That's labeled great. all the names. And if you don't want to use labels, use pictures. Like, as Arthur just mentioned, pictures are a wonderful way to help memory recall. We tell you at every phone to leave your name, your address, so that somebody who is within the home, if there is an emergency, can call. And we'll have that name right there, an emergency number. We also recommend a photo phone for somebody that may have starting dementia because the recall of the picture. They may not know exactly who that picture is, but they know if they press that number, that's somebody who will come and help them. And the big red cross, as the red cross sign, that's an emergency, and that will trigger in their mind, okay, that's an emergency, I'm having an emergency, I press that number, somebody will come help them. For all your other phones, we recommend you put on an answering machine at the lowest number of rings and the lowest setting that you can still hear it. And the reason being, because somebody with dementia may answer that phone, they're not going to remember who called, and they're not going to give you a message, but they also may be subject to a scam. It might be somebody on the other side of that phone that's going to try to sell them life insurance or a new roof or a whole number of things, and none of which you really need. We talked about labeling the contents. We also talked about labeling doors. And you want to have your doors, and we'll talk about it in a minute as well, but you want to have the door of, a, of a, like, say, your bathroom, but you want that person to go in, put a toilet on the, on the door in the front, because that will say, okay, this is the toilet, this is a room I can go in, this is where I need to go. In doors that you don't want somebody to use, we recommend either a stop sign, because that big red sign will remind them, okay, I need to stop, or, as been recommended, take a black scatter rug, but a, one that isn't a scatter rug, that has a good rubber hard bottom, and put it in front of the door. Because with visual perception difficulties, they're going to think that's a hole. And so you're not going to be having them walk through that space. And we also recommend putting a no soliciting sign at the front door as well. Because again, it's the same thing, you don't want somebody knocking on that door, the person with dementia answering it, and being sold something that they don't really need. So how do you secure and modify your home? We talked about doors a minute ago. Another very nice trick, or maybe not trick is the right word, but utilization, is paint. So if you notice these doors here, they're a different color than the walls. It says, okay, I can go through that. That's a door I can go through. But if you paint the doors that you don't want somebody to go through the same color as the wall, they won't realize that it's a door. It'll look like just one big, long space to them. So we often recommend your front door be the same color as the walls that are right next to it. But your bathroom door be something totally different. And that way it'll enable the person to know what room is a good room and what room is not. This is a wonderful time of year to buy sleigh bells. And you all know that Christmas started back in July in a lot of places. But sleigh bells, you hang them on a door. Why? Because when you open and close that door, it makes a sound. And it'll alert you that somebody maybe is coming in or out of the house that you don't want to maybe come in or out of your home. We tell you glass doors. Glass doors are, are a very um, difficult situation because a lot of people like to have glass doors to go outside. But again, somebody with dementia has a twofold problem. Their reflection on the door can scare them, or they may not realize that it's a door and goes through them. So we truly try to recommend that you cover them with curtains so that they're still there for you, but they were shaded, or you put decals on them to, to minimize some of that glare and to have them recognize that that is a door so they don't go through them. Keywords, similar to key, key items. Keep key items to go outside away from your front door. Because if you keep your keys and your wallet and your cell phone all by the front door, then that's signaling to the person with dementia, okay, that's where we go out. Okay, that's where I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go out this door. But if you don't do that, they're not gonna remember that that's a door. So you kind of keep things that are triple, uh, triggerable to their memory out of their line of vision. And here's an, another one. You can buy these in Target, in Lowe's, in Home Depot, everywhere. It's, they're 
safety proofing kits. And usually they're sold in the children's section, but they're good for all adults. And so then they, they kind of call it more the safety section. What they have on them is knob covers, so that if you have, say, a closet door that you keep your medicines in that also has a lock on it, but which we'll talk about in a minute, but if you put one of those things on, they can't open the door. And now they now make them because lever handles are so common now and it's what we recommend people use because you can use all parts of your body to open the door but if you don't want somebody to open the door they have locks for that as well or covers for them as well and in that same kit you'll find electrical cord cover electrical outlet covers because again we tell you to unplug your microwave and your coffee pot and all the appliances you don't want somebody with dementia fooling with but if you also then put an outlet cover in it, they're not going to be able to see to put the plug in or they're going to feel that there's a bump and not be able to do it and they're going to think it's maybe broken or not available to you. Windows, an escape artist. I had one client who said, okay, I can't go through the door, I'm going to go out the window. So we put limiting bars on the window so you can still open it to a point, but not a point that a human can fit through. Most important, we talk about smoke detectors and carbon monoxide detectors. We tell you to put them all through your house. And if you're not sure where to put them, we invite you to call the local police department, or fire department, excuse me, or building inspector, and ask them, where should I locate my fire and CO2 detectors in my home for my well safety? Always keep it battery operated, keep them fresh, make sure they're working. But we also tell you to practice an exploit plan. Make and practice an escape plan with somebody with dementia continuously. As Tammy said, routine, routine, routine. They like safety and security. If you practice that, if in the middle of the night something should happen, it will trigger. And they'll say, okay, that's the sound. Okay, this is what I need to do. This is where I need to go. So we really recommend make and practice an escape plan in case of an emergency. 